Another lucky draw for Man United today. Well, um, you see, it was indeed a lucky draw because honestly, I thought it was another loss again. Yeah, when Bruno got the red card, I was like, man, I think this is the time for us to just die. Nothing, nothing, nothing right is coming in. Like Bruno red card, consecutive red card, you know, leading the, the match by two goals, conceding two, trailing by one, three, two, Samuel Morodion, you know, just out muslim deletes everything was just bad honestly i lost i lost desire to watch Manchester united today honestly you know it's been coming but i think today is that time where i'll say i didn't, i don't i don't feel like it anymore i don't feel like it anymore all right your defense was in shambles today i mean it it, it was a mess because you look at the lead, you look at dalot you look at uh, martinez all those guys including Mazuri today in fact Look at what he was doing in terms of positioning. I think into the second, I think around 57 minutes, they could have made it 4 2. There was a one on one where I don't know where Mazri went to. That guy just ran into his, his wind and then shot at Onana Freak from point blank range. If not for the fact that Onana, Onana kept us, you understand? If not for those saves, we wouldn't have even got the draw. We wouldn't have got the draw, honestly. But, well, it's the hacks, it's the hacks problem, not my problem anymore. It's the hack and the bots problem. We, the fans, already know what we want. We know that. In terms of coaching, these players are not probably Teh uh, Te is not giving them the right information, or they are not able to execute the information. That means somebody has to go. Of course, we cannot chase all of the players away, so the manager has to go. I think not necessarily because of today's game or anything, but you know, the the whole thing was not exciting. My United is no longer exciting. It's it's, it's energy drilling. You understand? We are just we are just like it's, it's drilling everything inside of us. You can, can you imagine your club going to go up after losing to Tottenham and then you say, yeah, we're back. I think we can build from here. And then you go back to get a, 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 a concede two cheap goals. In the first half, we were leading at 20 something minutes, two new around 20 something minutes. And there was still enough time for Porto to come back inside the match. You first know, half, though? First half. First half, it's embarrassing. And then just, I think, a couple of minutes into the second half. They continue from where they stopped in the first half and then they scored again. I'm pretty sure if Samuel Morodion didn't go out of that game, he would have gotten another goal. Because it was when he left that my guy started to have free space to do stuff. You understand? Um, Martinez deletes Dalot. I don't know how... He, uh, maybe Dalot, Dalot is specific. No. You know me. You know me when it comes to Dalot. Dalot should not be playing for Derby County. How much for Manchester United? That guy is bad. Beyond bad. So... For they had to be to be to be out of his mind and silly enough to think that he can keep playing on Dalot and not continue and not expect errors. That's his problem. You get see if you look at that Dalot in eh, one single mistake. See, look at us now. When they had Kieran Tierney, mm -hmm. it's not like the defense was not strong, but Tierney was a weak link. So it's going to make the entire defensive line not so you know to execute the defensive uh, 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 duties will be difficult because of the shape will be bad when tiani left you get it and then they brought uh, what's the name of this guy from a uh, uh, this uh, guy Zinko? no not zinchenko kiwo kiwo yeah kiwo started to like you know make sure that the defense is tight and compact then they could they decided to build from there and then everything started to work but if you don't take that lot out of that place the defense will continue to scatter around Martinez will want to run and cover the space that the lot is leaving. His back will be empty. The little want to go and run and cover the space that Martinez uh, Martinez ran from. His back will be empty. If Mazuri tries to cover it, the back post will be empty. That is how everything will just run poor and then get it become a mess. If the hang as a manager does not see it, it's bad. Very, very bad. Okay. Very, very bad. All right, let's talk about Bruno's red card. You know, two consecutive red cards in the space of three days or so. You see, the last time I said it, I said, Bruno is not enjoying his game. You understand? Creatively, is not there. Even the passes, to nick one or two passes, is not there. He's always urgent. He wants to bring himself into the game, but you're not in form. This type of thing is going to lead into frustration. Frustration is going to lead into reckless decision. The, you, you were on yellow card. Look at how recklessly he threw that leg up. Like, how far? That's bad. And he knows it's you're on yellow card. Like even if even if you're not on yellow card, you understand? That is not the type of tackle you, you do. It, it is poor. It's poor. You're the captain for God's sake. You are the person who is the selling that ship. If you're on yellow card, you, the responsibility is on you to make sure that that thing is settled calm. But then look at him, look at what he's doing. 
He's too, he's too, he's too erratic. Bruno erratic, Dalot erratic, Delete erratic, Martinez erratic. Four erratic players that they, they act before they think. They act before they think. You have four of them in crucial positions in that defense. The only camp person is Mazri. That's why you, you see the way he plays. Three of them, two, Martinez, Dalot, and there was the name of this guy. Martinez, Dalot, and Delete. Three of them are very, very erratic. The way they go, damn. They just go into tackles. Whether or not it is calculated or not, they will just go into it and then miss it and then throw on an open. And then, see, first season, the guy got the golden glove. Why? Varan Martinez. Um, erratic Martinez, Cam Varan. Second season, Martinez was not there. Slow Maguire, slow Linelo, slow Evans. Then, now, you have to go back. How do they do it? You need somebody who is settled, who is calm, to play the six. You understand? Then the person who knows how to rush and play the five, he can go and jump and do everything. But you cannot play two players that are jumping like monkeys at the same time. You look for Martinez, he's not there. You look for the lead, he's not there. Dalot, oh. Dalot and the linesman, I don't know who is faster. Honestly, Dalot stands the same axis to the linesman. When they are crossing, he's not interested. You understand? Three, see, three chances today that they, they scored from. All came from Dalot's complacency and utter stupidity. There's nothing to draw from this game. You understand? There's nothing to draw. I don't know why Rashford was succeeded, do, but I think it's starting to be like we're not there anymore. This coach cannot push us to that point of competitiveness anymore. It's 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 close or even the end. All right, so Casemiro today was slow. The midfield was slow. Tracking back to help the defense. Oh, it's, he wasn't there at all. No, Casemiro, Casemiro is not new. We know this with him. We know he's no longer there. He's no longer the Casemiro from Madrid or the one we enjoyed in the first season when he came. Now, Casemiro, I think his age started to tell on his game. Well, we had two old men today running the midfield. And lucky enough, we didn't, we didn't lose. I don't know, probably they had a pastor prayed enough for him today because there was no way we should have scored that equalizer like it is not it's not part of the script Manchester United for what I know on that thing hag instead we would have considered another goal the fact that we equalize you just know something outside the ordinary influence that results honestly I've, I've noticed that you guys played a better football mm. without Bruno even with 10 men you played a better football move the ball quicker you know you lose the ball less than when Bruno was around exactly see Bruno mm -hmm. has to be informed to play the way he plays. If he's not informed, making reckless tackles and losing ball too much is a disaster. So when you take somebody who loses possession a lot away from the game, the game is going to be called what? A controlled game. We are able to control the flow of passes, control the direction of passes and the tempo of passes all by ourselves. It's not like we just hoof the ball, lose it and then start to chase it. No. You think if Bruno was in that game, the calmness of passing to Ganacho, Ganacho shooting with composure that led to two consecutive corners before it was called one. You think it would be there? Probably he would have even shot one of those balls because there, were, there was a time he shot one. We were building and then he just shot it out of the pitch. Like Casemiro was looking at him like, bro, why? You shoot like that. So this is not the first time. Even that Liverpool game, yes, we lost three new balls without Bruno. When Mount came in, the compactness was there. The good press was there. But really? moment, in terms of momentum, we're not there. And psychologically, the game was already out of our reach. That was why I think they scored that three goals and they lost the way we did. But I think Ten Hag needs to understand that football, somebody can be in form and out of form. That does not mean that they've been banished out of the team. Always understand that they can stay on the bench, pick their form. There was a point in time Guardiola benched KDB. KDB was on the bench for a number of games. When he picked the form, he came back again. He's not composed that he is a key man and he must not be on the bench. No. He has banished Anthony. As if Anthony can never play football. Now, Anthony came into today's game and did incredibly well. He held the wheat well. Make sure he troubled two, two guys were on him. He troubled them. Caused the corner that led to the goal. So, see, I don't understand. Well, I think they have right now. There's too many things running through his head, so he's not going to get a lot of things right. All right, so let's talk about oil on today. You know, first half of the game, mm. first shot on target, and first goal. If if you were hold on, mm, there was no way you wouldn't want to prove yourself when Ziggy is starting ahead of you. Like it does not make any sense. Somebody who does not score, 
He comes in and shy away from shooting. You as a striker, you be boiling on the bench. You be like, come on, hey, just hit it. A striker does not think when hitting you, hit. Whatever happens, happens. You, you, don't, you don't think about to score when you're a striker. No. All you want to do is to get the shot straight at that post. Once you hit the frame of the post, anything can happen. You don't have to keep thinking. Zigzag is somebody who, who, who thinks about the ball rather than to shoot when the ball comes. No. That's not a number nine mentality. So I think Hodgeland has proven today. Even leave the go away. Look at the way he was making the entire total defense on uh, 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 unsettled. You understand? He was troubling them, hitting them, making sure that they feel that the number nine is there. So, well, whatever happens, we are going away to Aston Villa in our next game. So we are done.